Organic compounds are chemical compounds based on the carbon atom. The huge variety of organic compounds has made organic chemistry an enormously large subject. We should all have an involvement in this line of chemistry because we are organic organisms, life forms composed mainly of carbon-based molecules. From everything we eat to the clothes we wear, from plastics to petroleum, organic chemistry, the subject of this unit, will be studied in some detail as we learn how to name these compounds, draw their structures, and see how the subject of organic chemistry fits into our lives with a special emphasis on Alberta's petrochemical industry. It will certainly be useful to review chapter 2 of your text and re-familiarize yourself with the intermolecular forces and Vesper theory covered in Chemistry 20 or Chem 30 prep. There are a wide variety of substances that are organic, but what exactly makes a compound organic? Early chemists thought that organic material was derived from living or once living organisms. A so-called life force was believed to exist in living organisms that enabled them to produce organic compounds. Quite by accident at first, and then later on by design, chemists began to synthesize organic compounds in the lab from inorganic compounds. Now, organic compounds are better defined as substances in which carbon atoms are either bonded to each other, or to hydrogen atoms, or to atoms of a few specific elements. There are a few carbon-based exceptions, like carbonates, carbides, cyanides, and oxides of carbon, like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, but none of the exceptions have carbon-carbon or carbon-hydrogen bonds. These exceptions join the family of compounds that contain no carbon atoms at all and are called inorganic compounds. So organic compounds are compounds that contain carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. They can also include oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. And some synthetic organic compounds contain halogens, elements from group 17 on your periodic table. The principal element here is, of course, carbon. The unique nature of carbon is based on its four bonding electrons, enabling it to form a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond with itself, turning into a variety of geometric structures, producing graphite, diamond, Buckminster fullerenes or buckyballs, and nanotubes. There are countless organic compounds, and some kind of classification system needs to be in place. Basically, the structure and type of atoms present is the key to organizing these compounds into families. We can divide organic compounds into two subcategories, hydrocarbons and hydrocarbon derivatives. Hydrocarbons basically contain only carbon and hydrogen atoms, connected by nonpolar covalent bonds. Hydrocarbons are generally insoluble in water. The hydrogen carbon derivatives will contain atoms such as oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, and halogens, connected to carbon atoms by polar covalent bonds, and are thus more soluble in water. Hydrocarbons can be subdivided into aliphatic and aromatic compounds. Aromatic molecules are based on a benzene ring of six carbons, named aromatic because of the intense aromas, while aliphatic molecules have their carbons in a chain. There are three subcategories of aliphatic molecules. The first are the alkanes, where a single bond exists between the carbon atoms. Alkenes have double bonds between the carbons, and alkynes have a triple bond between the carbon atoms. The first of the aliphatic compounds we'll talk about are the alkanes.